We're Jared and Amanda with After Homeschool, where we help homeschoolers learn about career fields in STEM and beyond. Hello, this is Jared, and thank you for joining us for our inaugural podcast. This is our kind of pilot podcast where we're going to introduce what we're all about and what we hope to accomplish with this podcast. So I am Jared Cooker, and I have with me here my wife, Amanda Cooker. Um, we both uh, have backgrounds in, in STEM, which if you don't know, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, it's kind of a little bit of about our background and how we got to this point. So we met at a community college here, uh, both studying engineering, um, kind of got married and went through this whole path together. I ended up with a bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering and her with a bachelor's and master's in materials engineering. Um, and... Personally, I was homeschooled all the way through high school, and I really saw a need um, to really help people understand why they're going for engineering or for science or math or, or anything. So kind of personally for me, when I, when I was finished with homeschooling when I was high school aged, I wanted to be a motorcycle mechanic, and my parents really pushed me to, to go to the local community college here, Emerald College, and test out some courses there and to see if anything really, you know, really stuck. Um, so I uh, went for business for a while um, and then eventually looked at the engineering curriculum and thought that like physics and calculus and everything sounded really neat. And so just kind of went into that and uh, decided I wanted to be an engineering major, just kind of stumbled into it. Um, being homeschooled, you know, you learn a lot homeschool through homeschool. Like you really learn how to pick up a textbook and read it and, that helps you a lot in college, and so I ended up doing really well in college. And um, by the time I was done with my bachelor's, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do job-wise. I had kind of, again, stumbled into mechanical engineering because I knew it would be fairly easy to get a job with a mechanical engineering degree. I wasn't really going for a specific career. I just thought that I could find something I wanted to do in mechanical engineering. And without having a specific career in mind, I decided I wanted to do research. So I thought I either wanted to be a professor or do research at a national lab. And so um, decided to go for a Ph.D. And it's kind of a long story, but we both needed to get into the same Ph.D. program. So we ended up going to Johns Hopkins. Um, And long story short, ended up just stopping with a master's degree and, and trying to find a job somewhere back in Texas. And just kind of took what I could and ended up back in my hometown and um, I've been fairly happy there and enjoyed what I do. But, you know, I think having some vision for exactly what I wanted to do would have, would have helped a lot and gone a long way. Even if the, the end goal would have been me working in the same place, you know, it really helps to have some vision of uh, what you're going to do with the future so you can prepare for it over a long period of time and really, you know, put, put things in place to get you where you want to go. Um, instead of just kind of wandering aimlessly and getting where you, where you end up being. So, you know, I didn't know if that was really unique thing, you know, just kind of aimlessly wandering your way through school and graduate school and into a career. But, you know, I've gotten to the point now where I'm a manager and I interview people and it's kind of the same story every time I interview someone, you know, why did you get into engineering? Well, it's because I liked math. Okay. Now why'd you get into mechanical engineering instead of electrical engineering? Well, this school, the local school is just accredited in mechanical. So it's really not a great reason why, you know, to do mechanical engineering. And so we, we kind of developed this mission of trying to help high school age students kind of chart out their future while they're still young and not committed to a degree program and um, not going down the path of a certain uh, education only to find out later they didn't like it or change majors and waste all that time and money. So this podcast is really to, to help people out there, specifically homeschoolers, because that's my background, to understand better where they're headed if they're going down the STEM path. And if they're not going down the STEM path, then to learn more about it. So the plan is to uh, really we would want to do a lot of interviews with people who have careers just to, to educate the listeners on what's out there. And so we want to want to educate on, you know, not just a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer, but really specifically – you know, all these people who get mechanical engineering degrees, they don't work really as a mechanical engineer. They have all these different engineering titles. And so we want to really learn about all the different facets that are out there. And again, kind of link it back to, to high school age people and specifically homeschoolers and the unique situation you're in now, what you can do now to prepare um, 
to get to a career you want, first to help you to figure out the career you want through these interviews and through the discussions that we have and insight, and then uh, to help you be best prepared. So that's kind of my background and, and motivation story. And so uh, I'll turn it over to Amanda to kind of share her thoughts on all this. Hello, everybody. I'm Amanda, as Jared introduced me. Um, so Jared and I met way back um, at our local community college. Um, I knew I always wanted to go to college after um, high school. I actually hated math in high school. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about my love for math. I don't think I've ever quite loved math, but um, I've always treated it kind of like eating my vegetables. You have to be good at it as an engineer. Um, so whenever I started college, um, I w- didn't... Um, so I guess a little bit about m- me personally is, you know, my parents and I really never had a conversation about college or about how or what I was going to pursue beyond high school. And so I really had no clue, absolutely no clue, never really talked to an advisor about any specific degrees. Um, But for some reason in my head, I wanted to do something big. Like it was weird. It's kind of what I always told myself was that whatever it was that I was going to do, I was going to go all out. And so I started um, the community college. I started going for business because I actually wanted to go to law school. Um, And then I worked at a local hardware store uh, as a cashier, and I met a lawyer in the line, and we briefly talked, and it was such a weird experience, but at that moment I decided I did not want to be a lawyer. Um, And so also I didn't really enjoy the business aspect of it. It just wasn't exciting. And so I finished up that semester, finished the business class, Again, I was kind of wandering. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, But then I decided, okay, you know, law school's out. So now I'm going to try to pursue uh, to be a doctor. And so I started taking biology classes. Um, About probably halfway through biology one, I just didn't enjoy it. It was a bunch of memorization. um, And while I enjoy STEM, I really don't like the memorization aspect of it. I really like the kind of interconnected calculation portion of it. And so I really wasn't excited about it again. Um, And I was taking trig at the time. I was actually having trouble in a trig class and I was afraid to talk to my professor directly. So I actually went to talk to his boss, who's the department head for some reason. I don't know why that was a little bit more comforting. And um she pulled me in her office. We'll likely have her talk on a later podcast. I've, I've contacted her. Her name is uh, Dr. Wetzel, and she's a huge influence on both Jared and I. So I went into her office um, and started telling her about how I was struggling in trig. And um, and uh, I don't even know how the conversation um, went down this trail, but she was she asked me if I'd ever considered engineering and I honestly had no clue what engineers did. I thought they maybe drove trains or, I mean, that was it. That was like the extent of my education on engineering. And she grabbed my hand and was pulling it to the side and explaining forces and how they have to um, balance each other out to have any stability in the world. And it was just at that moment that I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. So I started pursuing mechanical engineering um, I uh, went through statics, which is like the first real mechanical engineering class, and I enjoyed it, and then I went on to the next class, which was dynamics, and I realized I was kind of bored with it, and as I was going on through my degree with mechanical engineering, I wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought I had, or as much as I thought I would and so um, I happened to take a materials engineering course, and I, I loved it. Materials engineering is extremely tangible. So most of the classes you have hands-on. I mean, it's like in your face. You get to touch it, break it. And I knew that that was exactly what I wanted to do. And so um, I finished up with my bachelor's in materials engineering. Jared and I got married uh, about two weeks before we transferred together to New Mexico Um, And then we went to uh, New Mexico Tech together for about, I think it was three years to finish the rest of our undergrad. 
And after that, we applied, like he said, to Johns Hopkins. Um, I ended up dropping out about a semester and a half in. I uh, I might talk about this later because it, it kind of warrants a longer conversation about whether, you know, getting a PhD is right for you. But I decided that I, I just didn't want that lifestyle. The people were amazing. The place was amazing. I miss, I miss like, the atmosphere, but I just didn't want what came with that lifestyle, and I ended up dropping out about a semester and a half in. Um, took me about six months to have a job because I, or to get a job after that, I really had no real world experience. People looked at me like I was a lab rat, and for the most part, that's kind of what I was up until that point. Uh, I worked in industry for a little bit while Jared finished up his master's, and as soon as he was done, um, we applied all over the U.S., and we were both hired back in our hometown. So your hometown kind of has the the pool, and it'll always bring you home. Um, so but we're back in Texas, which we both really enjoy this state. We were born and raised in Texas, and so it's really familiar to us. Um, and so I uh, came back, and um, I worked at the local science museum for a while, just um, putting together their... Um, exhibits and uh it was a really fun kind of um I don't like relaxed time in my life and then I got a call from the same lady that introduced engineering to me and she asked me if I'd be willing to go to school and finish up with my master's so I could go and teach at the college that Jared and I started at and she's just the type of person in my life that I just can't say no to Um, and plus it was kind of exciting to get back in and and also to revisit my old school so I uh, started my master's um Jared and I have had a few kids in between uh starting my master's and now uh so that kind of threw a huge wrench into our plans but uh, you know children are amazing um so I finished up my master's and I ended up teaching at the community college for about four years um and it was around this time that I kind of started to get restless again. Um, you know, honestly, uh, you know, just to be really candid, I kind of thought, um, I was really trying to analyze, like, what was going on in my life at the time. Um, and I look back on it now, and I know I was just getting restless. You know, you know, when people talk about being an instructor in college, uh, I think you kind of have, like, these kind of romanticized ideas of any any job that you go into. But the reality is, is there's a lot of things that you don't expect. And so the reality was, was I was only kind of teaching in the classroom about 20% of the time. The other 80 was spent grading, training, you know, all, all the other things that, that kind of goes with it. And I enjoyed the 20%, but the other 80%, not so much. And so I was getting rather restless during this time. And, um, I taught Introduction to Engineering, um, which was one of my favorite kind of most flexible classes. And I did this assignment where I ended up wanting to interview my students one-on-one in my office. And I just kind of wanted to get to know them, kind of see what they're, they were doing, um, you know, beyond school. We were also going to talk a little bit about kind of like how they planned on funding their college. And it, I'm not like a financial advisor. It was more just to kind of have an open conversation about it. And so, you know, what I thought was going to be five minutes with each one of my students turned out to be hours. I think I spent upwards of like two hours with a few of my students. And I realized it was around this time. And I think um, it was it as I realized what that most of my students, probably like one in the whole class, actually chose like a particular company that they were aiming at. And all my other students were wandering. And they were all wandering in a similar manner that I was when I started school. And I realized that there was this systemic problem that students really did not educate themselves with intentionality. There was no end goal. They had no purpose for being there. They kind of just enjoyed, you know, all the nerdiness and all the people that were involved. But beyond that, they they just didn't see where they were going. And so, um, you know, Jared and I have, we've kind of been on this journey together and we've experienced this together. and We've both experienced this in different ways, but we just realized that the STEM community um, really, you know, most people just don't work with, with purpose. 
And we're hoping that we can, with this podcast, um, contribute to that and just have an open conversation about it, you know, inter- interview some professionals, um, you know, give our own insight, you know, whatever that is, and uh, just have some really good conversations with it. And we hope that, you know, we could help one person to be able to really have a meaningful career and to love their job and to be excited about what they do. Um, you know, we would have loved for us to have done that earlier on, but we're really happy that we're at least kind of working with purpose now. Well, that's kind of the backstory of, of why we're here and doing what we're doing. So um, we hope uh, this is something that, that resonates with a lot of you. Um, so s- s- tune in regularly. We're planning on putting out something at least once a week and uh, some, some good discussions between Amanda and I and guests that we have uh, with people out in industry and academia and so on. So again, thanks and check back again soon. Thank you for joining us today. This podcast is sponsored by Blue Barrel Scientific, a curriculum company that helps homeschoolers discover their career field one experiment at a time.